Hello. Today I want to talk about the depersonalization in terms of deficiencies in the body and how you can target those and help yourself get better again. So, um, this has come from my own personal experience. When I first started experiencing depersonalization, I didn't think that there was anything wrong physically with me. And for a long time I thought it was all emotional and a cause of trauma. Um, which I didn't have a lot of, but I, you know, I just made the shoe fit. Um, I realised after a long time, months, that actually a lot of my organs were struggling um, and a lot of parts of my body needed help with supplements. Once I started implementing them supplements and working hard at that, I saw gradual changes. Um, so I want to pass that on to you guys and so you can do your own research and kind of look at what you can improve in your body. Even if you feel healthy, there will still be things that you can do to try and support your organs. Um, even if there isn't a physical cause of your depersonalization, this is still going to help with anxiety because everyone needs some support in certain things. So we'll talk about... Um, different aspects so imbalances come in a lot of forms um, there is thyroid problems you may have so underactive and overactive thyroid can cause anxiety and as you know anxiety can cause depersonalization and depersonalization can cause anxiety so you want to get your thyroid checked off your doctor um, if you feel like you've got an under and over, or an overactive thyroid and the doctor said it's normal um, the, there isn't many supplements you can take for your thyroid that will help target but there is supplements you can have like iodine and um, selenium that will support the thyroid function so a lot of the times the doctors will say things are normal when they're borderline so you also want to make sure you get the results and do your own research as well but it's important to support your adrenals um, before you th support your thyroid. Adrenals are so important. I didn't realise even what they were <laughs> before like I discovered about adrenal support because I always had high cortisol um, but I didn't think it was anything to do with anxiety. I just thought it was like something, you know, like um, having high blood pressure or something. like. To me, it just was one of them things that I was like, well, it is what it is. But I soon realised that my adrenals were absolutely fried. Um, and they, they were, like, really struggling. So they were producing too much cortisol, too much adrenaline, and just all over the place. Um, that's, that's where all the racing thoughts come from. And, like, absolute fatigue and, obviously, anxiety. Therefore, depersonalisation. Adrenal glands aren't really looked at by the doctors. Again, it's another holistic kind of naturopath thing. Um, adrenal fatigue, I believe, is a real thing, but you won't find that on the NHS website or whatever. Adrenals can be supported by adrenal cortex, by thorn. You want to introduce that slowly, but work your way up to as many capsules as you need per day to feel like you're getting benefit from it. You may also want to get your cortisol levels checked um, doing a four point salivary, um, saliva test and seeing at what points of the day what levels your cortisol are at. And I'll go into all the tests you can do for depersonalisation in your health in a different video. But my cortisol was sky high all throughout the day. Um, so I started taking rhodiola rosa and holy basil and drinking holy basil tea at different intervals in the day and I found that I felt a lot calmer, my cortisol felt like it was coming down, like I wasn't as racy. So it definitely helped with um, the anxiety and therefore the depersonalisation. Um, imbalances as well come in the form of hormonal. So for a man you could have low testosterone, a woman might have you know, low oestrogen or low progesterone or even testosterone you know, or high um, levels of these. Again, you want to get your hormone levels checked at the doctors to make sure that everything's functioning well. Um, in terms of support for your hormones, it depends what the problem is, but there is a lot of natural ways you can treat hormonal imbalances. 
but it's important to find out definitely what the problem is first because you could be treating the wrong thing and make things worse. Um, a lot of your symptoms as well, especially for women like around the menstrual cycle, indicate hormonal issues. So if you do better with um, your mood, like from when you ovulate to when you get your period, it normally signifies, and you feel worse when you're on your period, signifies oestrogen dominance. Um, but if you do worse from ovulation to your period, um, you struggle for your progesterone um, being do more dominant that time period. So you just want to make sure you really look into that before you start doing anything because, like personally, I was taking something to increase my progesterone, but it was because my oestrogen was so dominant that it wasn't like bouncing out properly so I was just getting more surges of hormones made me feel worse um so organs that you do need to think about obviously um your vital organs you'll all know like what issues you have there if you've been to the doctors but um a lot of doctors like won't really go into your liver function to the point of like it being you know slightly dysfunctional or burdened with toxins so you want to make sure you're supporting your liver um by taking things like milk, milk thistle artichoke taurine um sunflower lectin, lectin um and making sure that you're limiting your toxic levels as well you know like alcohol and drugs but i'm pretty sure that you'll not really be inclined to load your body with toxins when you feel depersonalised anyway. Um, and another one is your gut health is very important. It's a very important factor for anxiety. Um, as you may know, a lot of your neurotransmitters are made in the gut. So you can have problems there like candida, um, small intestine, bacterial overgrowth, parasites. And the connection with your brain is very um, prominent and you know things like food sensitivities and intolerances as well can cause depersonalization because like I know a lot of people suffer heavy brain fog when they eat gluten in dairy so you want to do an elimination trial to see if that helps Um I'll go into your diet more in another video but you can do things for your gut to try and detox that taking probiotics um, you know, doing candida diets and cleanses um, as well as like bowel cleanses and also liver cleanses but be careful doing liver cleanses because they can be quite hard on your adrenals be sure your adrenals are supported before you do any sort of cleanses um, so deficiencies in terms of testing there are so many tests out there you can do to check what deficiencies you have um, what I would recommend if you do have the money to do private testing is probably amino acids. So look at your amino acid panel. Um, you can do a hair test, which I'll mention in another video, for heavy metals and um, hair mineral status. You can do blood tests for certain vitamins. Um, if you suspect like B12 or D deficiency or folate deficiency. Um, which is all connected to mental health and a lot of GPs don't routinely test for things like this but you can go private or if you did really hound the GP I'm sure they would do it but for me I just kind of felt like I had to just be my own doctor with it um, and went down the holistic route and I'm glad I did because you know GPs would probably just put us on a load of awful antidepressants which I have taken before which make, made me feel a lot worse. So I just decided that I'm gonna go all out and have tests done and find out what was going on. Um, and also there's like saliva tests like I've said about your adrenals for your cortisol. Um, but I'm sure by your symptoms, you might know or suspect what deficiencies you have and Go down that path of like find out whether your levels are high or low. Um, you want to also look at your homocysteine levels and your histamine levels as well because again those are two massive factors in depersonalization and I'll explain why when I talk about your DNA um, and how methylation affects depersonalization. 
Um, in terms of treatment, you know, I, f I believe that there is a natural cure for every illness and ailment on the on the earth that's been known to man. And, you know, whether or not we've found every single cure is, like, debatable, but I would never go down synthetic man-made um, treatment unless I had to, and there was no other option, like, for example, your thyroid, you probably need, like, T4 or whatever, T3, T3 and T4, you need, like, proper thyroid medication for that, but, you know, I wouldn't go without trying holistic things first before I went down that option. Um, with supplements, you can't really take the wrong one and make yourself worse because whatever you take is natural unless you buy something man-made or synthetic. Um, so I would just say go for it and, and if you suspect that you need more of certain things then there's no harm in buying the supplement and taking it for a few days but what I would say is make sure you introduce things gradually and not just chuck a load of supplements down your neck. Um, I'd done that at the start. I went to like Asda and bought just like load of multivitamins. I just thought, you know, surely I'm deficient in something and whatever this is, like I'll buy a load of different vitamins and one of them's got to have worked. Um, obviously it didn't. And I was just, I think I was taking like, I don't even know how many vitamins per day, but it was, it was a lot. Um, a lot of them I didn't need. And the, there is things you can become over toxic with like B6 and vitamin E but you'd have to take quite a lot for that to happen. So just introduce things slowly. Um, and also introduce supplements individually. Don't just take like a whole load at once because you know, if you feel better or feel worse, you're not gonna know which supplements done that. And I like to kind of gather information about how my body responds to things because if I take a supplement and I feel better and I think, well, what is that actually treating? And what's, what, part of my body was deficient for that to be effective and then that will give me more information of the jigsaw um, what is my health and I'll piece things together and be like right well that was deficient in that and that's also related to the function of this part of my body which also causes this deficiency um, so you've really got to be your own detective really and I know a lot of you have probably been at this for years um, and you know not finding the answers um, but I've made another video about the supplements I take um, if you want to watch that and just take note of things that you haven't tried um, and things that worked for you and you've dropped because you know you didn't think it was that very effective things like this take time I would say about a month before you can feel any you know, long-term positive effect. So once you get the right balance, um, depending on what your root cause is, you can continue that treatment and feel gradually better. Like I've known people who are really deficient in B12 and took a load of B12 for weeks and then come out of the depersonalization. So deficiencies are really something that you should be looking into. Um, Another thing to mention is that deficiencies, I feel, don't just appear for no apparent reason. There is things that cause deficiencies, such as toxins in the body that take up um, more space, I guess, and make you deplete, deplete your nutrients and your elements. Um, mercury is one of those, and for me, it really affected a lot of my body um, and cause a lot of deficiencies so you might want to consider that as well um, but deficiencies can come from all kind of things like health issues that like for example if you're deficient in iron then you may want to look at you know your consumption of iron and your symptoms um, that have been related to that so just make sure that you cover all bases and just do a lot of research because that's what's helped me a lot as well and I've joined a lot of groups for different deficiencies and read into that and look for similarities between things um, before I kind of compiled my whole, um, I guess, genetic profile and learned about what I needed. It's funny because in the past when I've um, struggled with depersonalization, like temporarily or anxiety, I could have really helped myself because, for example, if I 
had a really bad hangover one day um, I would have known back then to take some adrenal support take some electrolytes take some liver support um, then heal my gut I would have been like much healthier then and um, but instead I just I would just like lie in bed all day drink a load of sugary drinks and eat a load of carbs and I, and I know that helps because the electrolytes in that but you know I could have done things a lot more <laughs> healthily and holistically but now I know I'll, I'll know I'll never fall into that trap again Um in the next video I'm going to go into toxins that affect depersonalization so as you may know for me I believe that depersonalization often stems from toxic burden level in the body and your body not being able to process things that shouldn't be there. So I'm going to talk about what those things are and how you can aid your body in getting rid of them and feeling okay again. Um, a lot of toxins have been there for years and people haven't realised it and you know they think their problems, of psych the problems are psychological, don't realise that actually the body's loaded with heavy metals or like your body hasn't been methylating for a long time because of all the parabens and pesticides that you've consumed but I'll talk about that in another video um, because I am going to cover a lot of things and I will cover mental health, I'll cover PTSD, bereavement, stress, um, you know a lot of anxiety producing things as well um, so I hope this has helped and let me know um, if you have any questions, thanks